Good afternoon and welcome to the Tech Talent Q&A session sponsored by Old Dominion University and the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. I'm Dr. Betty Adams, Executive Director of the Center, and we here are committed to providing access to the education and training that will prepare you for jobs in the region. And right now, some of the hottest and highest paid jobs in Southern Virginia are tech jobs, computer science, computer engineering, and information technology. Uh, today, we're talking about how adult learners, IT Academy completers, and career switchers can tap into these tech talent opportunities right here in South Boston. We'll be focusing on ODU's tech talent bachelor degrees, and you'll be hearing from some of the top faculty in these departments, as well as ODU staff who can help you get signed on. There are a number of different pathways to these degrees right here at the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. And depending on what your specific circumstances are, there is a pathway for you. And I'll mention one popular pathway is through the community colleges at the center, where you can knock out at a fraction of the cost your general ed courses before transferring into the ODU program of your choice. And ODU and community college staff have that process down to a science. So check out the chat box for specific contact information on the community colleges, as well as general contact information for the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. And so with that, uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce Chris Yost, uh, who is coordinator for Tech Talent Transfer Initiatives at Old Dominion University. Chris, take it away. Hello, everyone. I am so thankful to have you all here today. Uh, as Betty just said, I am the Tech Talent Transfer Coordinator here at Old Dominion University. And basically what that means is I work mostly with computer science and computer engineering uh, uh, interested students transferring to the university and basically help them through their transition here to Old Dominion University. And uh, I know we have limited time today, so I'm not going to take too much time talking. Um, as Dr. Uh, Adams mentioned, uh, please utilize the chat function or use the chat function. We will be monitoring throughout the presentation and we will answer your questions uh, as soon as we possibly can. And all your questions. I, I promise will be answered and we're happy to answer them. So uh, first I'd like to do introduce uh, from our admissions office, Amid Saleh Safari, and he will be presenting on the transfer admissions process here at Old Dominion University. Thank you, Chris. And hello everybody. Uh, my name is Amin Saleh Safari and I hope everyone had a great week and hopefully everyone's looking forward to this weekend. Of course, it's Halloween, so um, I still don't know what to dress up as, but uh, maybe I'll go in as an admissions counselor because that is my position here at ODU. Um, I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully, can everyone see my screen? Oh. Yes. Okay, um, I don't know why it's showing displayed like this, but um, yeah, so we are a top national research institution. We actually have a QR code on the screen. Um, if you would like to find out uh, more about ODU and uh, it will give you a chance to connect with you guys, you can scan this QR code and we'll be happy to provide you any information um, that you would need to know from us. But like I said, we are a top national research institution. Um, so we are located uh, at the heart of Norfolk, Virginia. So there's a lot of experience and internship opportunities for students to grow. We highly believe in uh, hands-on experience at ODU. So any major that you will be going into, you will be uh, able to get these hands-on experience to build your resume and be successful here at uh, Norfolk and at ODU. So to speak a little bit about the admissions process at ODU, um, all you would need to do is complete an online application. So you can either do the online application that we have that's for ODU, or you can complete the common application. We do accept both. Um, however, there's also a $50 non-refundable application fee, uh, but I'm sure there are a lot of fee waivers that you may be able to uh, receive from wherever you are transferring from, but you can also email our admissions uh, office as well, and we'll be happy to um, find some application fee waivers for you to use. 
Uh, the dates to remember that are really important uh, for if you're coming in the fall, uh, make sure you apply uh, by August 1st. And if you're coming in in the spring, of course, it's October 1st. And for summer, it's March 15th. I know that if you're planning on coming in the spring, the October 1st date has passed. However, we are accepting applications uh, on rolling basis. So these are just basically soft deadlines. You can still apply to ODU um, if you would like. Um, these are just uh, preferred dates that you apply so you can get your uh, decision as soon as possible. Uh, we also need your official college transcript or transcript. If you attended more than uh, one university or one institution, we will need um, all the uh, college transcripts that you have. If you have less than 24 college credits, uh, we would also need your official high school transcript as well. Um, this will give us a, a chance to review your application uh, to make an admissions decision. Uh, we do review students as a whole. So the SAT, ACT requirements requirements. Uh, those are optional. You don't have to send us any scores. The essay and letters of recommendation, those are also optional. And of course, uh, I am an undergraduate uh, admissions counselor here. Uh, we actually have our uh, transfer counselor who um, was not able to uh, be here today, but her information is here on the screen. Um, if you have any questions about the transfer process and admissions related questions, you can always email her and she'll be happy to speak with you all in any question that you may have. Um, I will also leave our main admissions email in the chat as well. So you can always uh, email any of our uh, admissions counselors that are here at ODU um, to to, you know, receive any information that you need. Uh, but thank you all for joining this session. And hopefully, um, I was able to give you all the information you need to become a monarch here at ODU. Thank you, Amin. Next, we have uh, Regina Hill to present on ODU Online's program here at Old Dominion University. And this is especially beneficial because both the computer science program and the computer engineering program here are offered fully online at Old Dominion University. So Regina, thank you very much and take it away. Thank you, Chris. Um, again, my name is Regina Hill, Director of Community Engagement and Outreach for ODU Online. I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, um, so that plus ODU, um, I'm going to show you a video that explains what plus ODU is all about. Let's try that again. Students can complete their first two years at a community college, and then they can complete their junior and senior courses with ODU. So the tagline plus ODU, we start at junior community college, and then a seamless transfer to Old Dominion University online. We literally can take a student here from the very first college course all the way to a PhD. The articulation agreements that we have with ODU make it really easy for students to transfer. And we have staff in place that will help our students make that transition. So I would basically jump right in and then finish a year and a half later and receive my bachelor's degree. It lowers the risk, it lowers the barrier. It's very important for us to understand the students and to make sure that ODU Online is a good fit for them because we want them to graduate. I did it, Mom! By taking your first two years at the community college, the tuition is at that community college rate. Not only does it save money, but I would say it does help guide students into what they want to do advising and mentoring information for our students really from day one. I don't think I would have been able to finish school about ODU online. And the reason why is it's convenient. You can go there and visit. They're welcome to participate in a variety of activities. A lot of classes are asynchronous, and I can do them at my own time in a given period of time. So we're able to offer them an education right where they are. It's challenging, but it can be done. I graduated, so if I graduated, I think a lot of people can graduate.
Okay. Um, so um, just to give you a little bit of history about ODU Online, we started in 1994 offering courses by satellite and that program was called TeleTechNet. Uh, TeleTechNet was in partnership with the Virginia Community College System. And the goal really was to offer a quality education at an affordable price. In fall of 2014, we uh, retired the satellite system and offered, started offering all of our courses completely online. We currently have over 50 partners in Virginia and across the country, including uh, Washington State and Arizona. And we actually have broadcast uh, courses out to sea to our military ships. I also want to let you know that in-house, a part of uh, ODU Online or the Office of Distance Learning, we have the Center for Learning Technologies, which assists faculty with course development and online delivery. Why should you consider ODU Online? Uh, we have 30 years of experience in offering education at a distance, voted number one top online college in Virginia for 2019 and 2021, 25 years of partnership with the Virginia Community College System, where we actually have offices located at most of the Virginia Community College campuses. And actually we do have uh, a representative that works out of the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center. So if you have any questions, we have site on place at your com community college that can help answer questions about ODU online. We have over, uh, offer over 100 degree programs online. And I encourage you to visit our website, online.odu.edu. A lot of great information there for you. You'll find our uh, tuition to be very competitive and affordable. Virginia in-state tuition is 360 per credit hour. Out of state is 407 per credit hour. We are a proud military friendly school. And in a recent survey, 96% of our students reported that they were satisfied or very satisfied with their online experience. So as you think about um, coming into ODU online, we do have a process for our students. Uh, first, you would meet with an enrollment coach. That person uh, will discuss with you your career choice, your academic program of interest. The next person uh, to meet with would be an enrollment coordinator. And that person is going to offer you a free evaluation of all of your transcripts. So you know exactly what courses transfer into ODU. And they will also help you with the application process. Now, once you become admitted, you will be assigned a student success director. And that person will be your advisor throughout your career with ODU. They will help you select your courses each semester and keep you on track to graduate. We um, offer our courses in really two different formats. Asynchronous as you do the courses that you're on your own pace through Blackboard or asynchronous where you use uh, web conferencing technology such as Zoom. And then some of your courses might be uh, a combination of two, the asynchronous and synchronous. Our students have the same support services as our Norfolk uh, students have, uh, academic support, 24 seven tech support, access to the tutor and writing labs. Uh, we have a great career development center. Um, they will help you with resume writing, interview skills, the library, a great resource for students. If you need documents sent to your home, they will mail those, that information out to you. We also have a military connection center that supports our active duty and veterans, a student success center and free software. Um, we also have, I want to mention our Office of Prior Learning Assessment. This office, you can obtain credit for work experience, um, credit for experience in the work setting, military training or independent study. And there's three ways that uh, you can choose to be assessed for credit. That's a departmental exam, portfolio, or training evaluation. And students can earn up to a maximum of 60 experiential uh, credit hours. So to be a successful online student, 
Um, you have to be organized, um, be able to work independently, uh, disciplined, comfortable with technology, efficient reader, and comfortable communicating online with your peers and professors. Some of the frequently uh, uh, questions that we receive about ODU online, will the word online appear on my diploma or transcripts? No, your diploma will say that you earned your degree from Old Dominion University. Is there a difference between online courses and courses on the main campus? The courses are taught by the same professors, same rigor. Will I ever need to go to the Norfolk campus for my classes? No, again, your courses are either taught, the delivery mode is asynchronous or synchronous, but some of our, some of our students do go to campus and they do visit campus. And depending on where you live, you might be able to take some of your uh, courses on campus, but um, we do have the computer science and computer engineering is totally online. How do I take my exams? Um, our students use three different, three or four different platforms for exams, and that's Blackboard, Smarter Proctoring, or ProctorU. And actually, some of our students come on site to our partner locations to be tested. Can I participate in commencement ceremonies? You certainly can, and we encourage you to do so. Um, commencement is held on our Norfolk campus twice a year in the fall and in the spring. I'll share with you some of the rankings. Uh, number six, best online computer science degree programs, intelligent.com 2021. And number one, best on bachelors in computer engineering, the best schools that are worth 2020. Um, again, my name is Regina Hill, Director of Community Outreach. Um, I do want to share with you our uh, website really quickly. So let me to change over so I can show you. So I think everybody can see that. Um, so this is our online website. Again, I encourage you to visit our website. A lot of good information. Um, if you scroll here, click on computer science. So again, uh, visit the website. I do want to point out to you, if you would like to learn more, uh, complete the inquiry form here, submit it, and one of our coaches will be in contact with you within uh, 48 hours. And again, this is for you to gain more information so you can make an informed decision if ODU Online is a good fit for you. And I also want to show you, I think this is a pretty neat tool that we have on our website. Um, careers in computer science, you can search by city, and I'm going to put in Danville, which I know is close to your location, and you can see different job titles along with the salary and the average annual openings of um, careers in computer science. And just to give you a comparison, if you put in Richmond, Virginia, so you see that, again, job titles in more possibilities here uh, in Richmond, but that's just to give you an idea. So um, again, thank you. And um, I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Regina. Uh, I don't think there's any questions for now. So we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, Janet Brunel will present on our computer science program here at Old Dominion University. So hello, everybody. I am happy to be here to talk to you about our computer science program. I am the chief departmental advisor, as well as the undergraduate program director, as well as teaching faculty for this program. I am an alumnus of the program, having earned multiple degrees from ODU's computer science program myself. So here at ODU, the computer science program is a part of the College of Sciences. At a lot of schools, you'll find computer science embedded in the College of Engineering. When our program began here many years ago, it branched off of the math department. And in doing so, it remained a part of the College of Sciences and it still is there today. 
So one of the things that is of note is that not only do we have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, we also have a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with teacher licensure. We are being tasked with providing a program that will allow students to become middle school and high school computer science teachers where you used to have English specific teachers, science specific teachers. We now have computer science specific teachers. They actually fulfill the degree requirements for CS minus just a few courses. And those are replaced with the teacher licensure courses so that they can inspire and educate students before college age to care about CS and computer engineering. And if you talk to a lot of students, they make up their mind by the time they're beginning high school as to what they think they want to be in college. And so it's great that we're going to start teaching our elementary school students computer science in the third grade. We have an honors program. We are part of the Tech Talent Investment Program. We are one of the three ODU signature distance learning programs. And one of the things that is might be of big interest to you is that we have a number of five-year programs that allow for you to earn two Bachelor of Science degrees in five years, computer engineering being one of those programs. If you look at where the jobs are going to be as we as we go through the year 2026, and I pulled up the data on 2028 yesterday, it does go up slightly in terms of the number of jobs that will be available for computer scientists who are earning Bachelor of Science degrees in computer science. I appreciate that the uh, type is a little small, but those jobs range in a variety of areas. What we do in a CS program is provide you with the toolbox at the 100 and 200 level, whether that be at ODU at a, or at a community college of math, of programming, and of science and those gen eds. Armed with that toolbox, you move to ODU and our 300 and 400 level courses that will guide you towards being able to satisfy the credentials necessary for systems analysts, security analysts, systems administrators, database architects, and so on. And they do garner very strong and healthy six-figure salaries. One of the things that is also true is that the number of jobs that are available to computer science graduates is about six-fold the number of graduating students that are being educated to fulfill those jobs. The computer science jobs are going to continue to grow. The only area of computer science jobs that the Labor, Labor Bureau of Statistics states is going to go down is that for a programmer. So it's a good thing that computer scientists are not just programmers where the whole enchilada, as I like to say. And so if you think about what you're able to do, the pandemic has turned the ODU campus into a distance learner friendly area for which there are great opportunities that may not have existed in the form they do now for participating in clubs, being part of the honors college, gaining internships and potentially even, even working for the system staff here at ODU. So one of the things that I would like to share with you is our prerequisite structure. The gray courses here are the math. If I was uh, motivated enough, I'd break into song and dance for you right now in terms of it's all about the math. It is all about the math for both computer engineering and computer science. We are problem solvers and we solve the world's big problems using calculus and higher. You just can't do the little things with any less. You can do the little things with less than that, but we are the big problem solvers. 
Every course on the screen, be it green or blue, is a required course for the curriculum. And the green courses are what I call the critical path. They are the courses if you neglect to stay focused upon, you will delay graduation. When you come to ODU, you will start in a C++ programming course, which becomes the prerequisite for everything else in the curriculum, and that has a co-requisite of pre-calculus math. If you were to start at the community college system, the course numbers and names that turned red as I transitioned to this slide, those are courses that you are able to take at the community college. There are courses that are equivalent to linear algebra and statistics that I will accept as credit for the CS program. So you can start at ODU with more than just what's necessary for an AS in CS that will even further shorten the amount of time left for graduation once you transition from the community college to ODU. The core is made up of math, stat, programming courses, it's CS electives, and the traditional gen ed requirements. With math and stat, you're going to start in either what I call middle school math, if you don't have SAT scores to bring with you to ODU, take those SATs, please take them. With that, you'll place somewhere within this thread. Most four-year schools in the Commonwealth of Virginia require that you be calculus ready before you start at the university in one of our programs. Here at ODU, you can start at any of these level maths and we will help you prepare for success as a CS major. The programming courses do have math as prerequisites. So pay attention to that math. If you're listening to this as a high school student, take math in your senior year. Don't skip that math, even if you've met the requirements for that high school diploma. Make sure you're prepared for the future that you may wish to have as a computer scientist. Because we are a four-year research university, a lot of the people you will take courses with in your junior and senior year are the people who are doing funded research in these incredible areas. We have huge computing infrastructures in place in our building that support our researchers. We hire undergraduates. We have a linked five-year program where you can earn a master's degree in addition to an undergraduate degree in five years. That can be done and is done every day online. So we hope that you'll find this program of interest. We have people that work for, what's it called now, Merit? No, what's it? Facebook. That one, and we got people that work for Dominion Enterprises, um, LinkedIn, uh, Microsoft, all those great places, and they still stay in contact with, with me today. And you'll find out about job opportunities with them. Google came to campus last two years ago, right before the pandemic, and they also interviewed distance learners in that process. They appreciate the strength of our program and they're always seeking our diverse student population. So thank you, Chris. Hi, Janet. Uh, I received the question via email, surprisingly enough, and they were asking the percentage that ODU uses um, in regards to C++ in, I guess, relation to other programming languages such as Java or Python? So we do teach, we start with C++, and in our third programming course, you're also required to know and learn Java. In our CS electives, the courses where you're actually getting hands-on laboratory experience that is utilizing the best practices of solving problems with computer science for those areas, you are required to learn additional languages 
on your own and with the help of our online tutorials. Once we've gotten you through what we consider to be a proficient programmer, we don't teach you new languages. And we do that on purpose. As you become ingrained in your profession and in your jobs, they're going to require that you learn new tools, if not build new tools. Computer scientists and computer engineers build the tools that the IT people and the cybersecurity people use on a daily basis. And so we are the ones that craft those new solutions. And most, you'll find that most of the new languages, Python, R, others, they're based on C. So learning C++ first prepares you to be very reasonably, adequately, and ready to excel in learning those other languages. Excellent. Thank you, Janet. And um, if I don't receive any other questions, we'll go ahead and move on. And now we have Dr. Walid Al Asadi to present on the computer engineering program here at Old Dominion University. Okay. Well, good afternoon and uh, delighted to be here to present the computer engineering. Let's do the screen sharing first. Uh, Okay, you see the slides? You see, okay, great. Uh, my name is uh, Walid al -Asadi. I am uh, a new faculty, a new addition to the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Uh, my specialty is in computer engineering. I am a microprocessor designer uh, by training. I worked for IBM. And I was one of the technical lead for the PowerPC embedded processors. So I delighted uh, to join uh, ODU. I joined ODU last year and I am teaching uh, courses in computer engineering, mostly hardware uh, design. So this is my name and this is our department chair, uh, Oscar Gonzalez. And this is the email of the uh, department. Uh, our theme in the department is innovating the future is what we do. So, but basically I'm going to focus on computer engineering uh, uh, program. And as uh, uh, Dr. Hull uh, mentioned that our online computer engineering is voted number one. And we are so delighted about that. And what is the BS in computer engineering? Well, I'll be talking about the computer engineering, uh, uh, meaning mostly the hardware design. And for the other discipline, modeling and simulation, Dr. Lethram, my colleague, will be covering that. So we have two majors, computer engineering uh, with a built-in minor in computer science. And of course, uh, the uh, modeling and simulation uh, programming that Dr. Lethram will be talking. So uh, computer engineering major, the program of study, uh, basically if you look at the computer engineering or the computer uh, hardware engineering, I would say, is we are trying to design and solving uh, a system. If you look around you, everything is computerized. Uh, your laptop, your cell phone, your, uh, your car, your uh, uh, everything, your GPS, uh, everything around you is uh, computer engineering, meaning that there is some computer system or embedded system, if you wanna call it, that control the task, whatever the task is. So the task in the, com in this, in the car is basically, the multimedia and the control system in the car. Uh, the, uh, in your cell phone is controlling everything, sending and receiving. And therefore, uh, the, 
work of the computer engineering, the hardware is highly connected with the computer science, computer science providing the software uh, uh, engineering to us, software uh, packages, and of course the electrical engineering. So for the computer engineering, uh, let me, Yeah, I should have uh, gone <laughs> for the presentation. Uh, okay, so uh, this is what basically uh, we are doing. We are designing a computer system. Uh, in this case, this is a, what we call it embedded system. Embedded system is a trying to solve a specific task. So if I am uh, designing a security system, well, this is a, sp a specific task. So therefore I am going to use uh, this board and I am going to program and to be sure that uh, this board is going to perform the task that is uh, I am designing uh, for. Uh, if I want to design a system, say for the smart power management, so basically uh, the computer engineer is going to design the system using some wireless sensor, sensor, wireless sensor networking and so forth. So he's going, he or she is going to build this kind of uh, uh, system. So basically this is what we call the hardware uh, design. And uh, uh, students when designing uh, this kind of system must have a good uh, skills in using C++, Python uh, language. So he must, he or she must have taken those courses uh, in the uh, sophomore year in the department of computer science, because we are heavily counting on programming the FPGA inside the board using C++, Python, or using high-level description language, which is VHDL, Verilog, or System uh, Verilog. Uh, and those uh, courses are basically taught at the uh, junior year. This is the skeleton or the diagram of our a degree, computer science, BS in uh, computer science. And basically, if you look at the computer engineering, we have four concentration. So students must be <coughs> at the, student must talk to his academic advisor uh, for consultation to decide about the concentration. So we have a computer hardware system Students learn how to design chips, uh, design digital system, design uh, 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 embedded systems. We have a computer networks. So basically uh, they need to, for example, design uh, uh, sensor, wireless sensor networking, uh, uh, learn how to do the evaluation or the effectiveness of a computer network because on the board we need to decide on the what kind of networking i square c or uh, lan or uh, a different uh, networking uh, protocol used on the uh, board uh, cyber security uh, basically i am uh, myself uh, uh, i i consider myself uh, also uh, cyber security because um, uh, we and my students, we develop some uh, uh, algorithm to detect any unwanted hardware inserted in the uh, system. So if some piece of hardware inserted, uh, we develop some algorithm that will detect and lo localize where this hardware is inserted. And we have another uh, uh, concentration, which is the data analysis and machine learning engineering. So the total is 128 credits, but the elective courses, I mean, all those four 
co four concentrates are taking the same core courses, but some elective courses that the students with his advisor, his or her advisor, are deciding about the elective courses, which are six uh, that must be taken during the uh, senior uh, senior year with the senior design uh, uh, project. So basically, that is uh, the uh, distribution of the uh, credits here, and the total is uh, 128 uh, uh, credits. Okay, well, uh, jobs. And uh, I guess uh, all, of, all of us agree that in computer engineering, especially right now in cybersecurity, uh, aerospace, automotive, uh, uh, robots and uh, defense. And this is the, uh, this is the local uh, internships that we encourage our students to go and seek. And, uh, Basically, I look at the uh, STEM statistic from IEEE and some federal agencies, and this says or suggests that the average starting salary for BS in computer engineering starting at 100K compared to the other uh, disciplines. Now, uh, for those who are uh, choosing uh, hardware design, of course, we all know that Intel, Raytheon, uh, Texas Instrument, Freescale, Motorola, and uh, the list is long, but I had the honor to work for IBM uh, before joining academia. Okay, so uh, in our, well, I, I will leave this modeling and uh, simulation to my friend, Dr. Lethron. And I'm going to skip uh, this. And uh, this is the for uh, Dr. Lethron to uh, to uh, to cover. And also a list of employers uh, in computer in, in all the disciplines of computer engineering are so long, and basically. I am not going to go even in gaming right now, designing a processor for gaming. And uh, so aerospace, military, medical, so, okay. So there are some of the pictures that, uh, for example, here, the image processing uh, people are working. This is for laser. Uh, maybe it's not quite connected to computer engineering, but it requires some computerized uh, system. And then cybersecurity, I mentioned to you how important uh, these days for the, uh, to ensure trustworthy of any system. Uh, this is how we, uh, we conduct our labs. So basically it's what we call hands or curriculum. So you can see students in the lab. This is a digital logic lab learn the basic uh, design of uh, uh, some systems, some digital systems. And basically this is the hand on, the, so this is the breadboard that the students need to construct their uh, design. So they design it first, uh, uh, show it to the TA or to the instructor. After getting the approval, they go and build their uh, system. Uh, this is when designing a, pro a robot, for example, here. Okay, uh, this is a six uh, leg robots and the robots is one of the uh, uh, strong area in computer engineering. And you can see this is the embedded system. This is the board that controls the operation here. It's six leg uh, robot. This is, for example, this is a, uh, in uh, senior design, uh, student design, uh, let me stop. S uh, the, uh, basically the students is designing uh, some security system. And basically you can see, uh, this is the board that we are using. This is the embedded system here, the FPGA. 
and the students need to program this error. Uh, and of course, uh, the peripherals here he designed uh, uh, and uh, connected to the board and uh, students uh, wrote the um, algorithm in Python and dump it on the FPGA. And you can see he added uh, this uh, uh, piece of hardware to uh, detect if there is any violation of the security of the uh, building. So this is an example, computer engineers design embedded uh, system uh, for some specific task. Right now, I have a group designing a smart power management for Kaufman uh, building. And basically, they are going to do the same thing uh, using this uh, board and understanding, of course, not only using, understanding what this board, what is the networking, uh, what is the network protocol here? Uh, what is the IOs of the board? And uh, uh, the power management is uh, our smart power management or renewable energy is one of the theme is very important and we need to computerize uh, this uh, uh, renewable energy or power uh, management. Uh, so basically I think I presented the, uh, the hardware design of the and that is our theme in Uverting the Future. And uh, uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, happy to take your uh, questions. Any questions, folks? Thank you, Dr. al uh, I think we're good for right now. I think we'll um, possibly have questions at the end, but we'll go ahead and move on now and have Dr. Jim Lethrum present on the modeling and simulation program here at Old Dominion University. Okay, um, glad to be here to talk to everybody. Uh, I am going to be discussing the a new major underneath of the BS in computer engineering. So if you majored in modeling and simulation engineering, you would get a BS in computer engineering, but your major would be in modeling and simulation engineering. So my background is actually, I spent 20 years in the ECE department teaching computer engineering, and I've spent over the last 10 years teaching modeling and simulation. So I'm, I'm gonna um, discuss this. We actually, I am I have a dual role currently in both ECE and in the Department of Computational Modeling and Simulation Engineering, but these two departments are merging in the next year and we are create, have created this brand new program that just came live this year um, that you will have an opportunity to participate in. So let me talk a little bit about the program. Um, the curriculum focuses on the computational side of engineering uh, because we're coming out of the computer engineering program there is an emphasis on analog and digital circuit simulation. So if you're designing a circuit, circuits now are way too complex to try to build and test the physical circuits. So we go through a whole process of simulating the circuits before we actually go to manufacturing. Um, that involves learning how to do a whole set of different simulation techniques uh, that include discrete, continuous, and Monte Carlo simulations. So we cover all that within the program. Um, you get an opportunity to learn parallel and distributed simulations so that you can now attack much larger simulations. Uh, you learn how to design simulation and software. So 
not just how to use a tool to develop a simulation, but how to develop the software to build the tool to begin with. Um, and you get to actually interact with hardware at the level of creating virtual reality and augmented reality capabilities. Now, there is an emphasis on simulation within the, the computer engineering discipline. However, you learn enough to be able to expand beyond the computer engineering world and to develop um, simulations in other application domains. Uh, I even had an undergraduate class develop a simulation to study the impact of group size in, um, in the COVID pandemic when they came and said, okay, to start out, we're not allowed to group in larger than groups of five. And then they said 25, and then they said 50. Well, what, what is the result of that group size in the spread of the pandemic? And students were actually able to simulate and demonstrate the impact of group size. So you can expand this to many other application domains outside of just computer systems. So career options, um, you can develop in um, CAD software developers. Uh, we have a lot of students that go into defense modeling and simulation. Um, we have the majority of our students actually go into autonomous vehicles and intelligent transportation. We had just had a graduate student who this past year took a job with Google working on their driverless cars. Uh, you can come out with software developers. The discipline actually teaches you the underlying um, tools to be able to develop gaming engines. Um, we are engineers, we don't teach you the creative side of gaming. You know, I'm not gonna claim we're gonna come out and teach you how to create the, the next great video game, but you can learn techniques that for instance, will make that game look more realistic. Um, and we are heavily mathematically oriented because in simulation, the simulations really just generate information that then we need to take and analyze to be able to make decisions. So the simulation gives us an ability to study a system and then ask what if questions. But if you're gonna ask the what if questions, you're gonna get a lot of data, which means now we need to train you to be an analyst so that you can make those decisions. So a lot of opportunities in different disciplines to go different directions with the, the program. Uh, so let me just kind of give you, because a lot of people don't understand what I could do with modeling and simulation. So I'm going to give you just an example um, of what you could do with modeling simulation. It's something that I have had um, undergraduates working on, on this project. And the idea is if you're going to develop an autonomous vehicle, um, you can, while you're developing the hardware and while you're developing the autonomous software. And so those two aspects come from my colleagues um, focuses. So the autonomous software, Ms. Burnell was talking about the software development. Well, she teaches you those tool sets. You can learn AI, you can learn the software development. On the computer engineering side, um, Dr. Alisadi teaches you the hardware development so that you can develop the hardware to control the autonomous system. But while you're developing those two, if at the same time you develop a simulation of the physical hardware, and you develop a virtual environment in which that physical hardware can play in, now we can test both the hardware and the software very early in the development cycle, whereas normally you have to wait till the software is sufficiently developed and the hardware is sufficiently developed to really do proper testing. And so we now can introduce very early on testing the autonomous software in a simulated environment. And then as we develop the hardware, then we can actually test the hardware in a virtual environment. Um, you, I like to use the example of testing a driverless car in a parking lot. So I would start out with a, driver, a totally simulated driverless car in a virtual environment. Then I would get a physical driverless car as the hardware was developed. I would put it in a parking lot and it would drive around, but it'd be like if I put you in a virtual reality environment, the car, there'd be nothing else in the parking lot, but the car would see other cars that would have to avoid. Then as you step forward, now we put the car in an augmented reality environment and 
now there are physical cars in the parking lot, but we add virtual pedestrians because we don't, if we have a problem and we actually hit something, hitting a pedestrian would be bad, right? Maybe hitting a, a car, it probably wouldn't be a real car, but a, a physical structure wouldn't be so bad, but it allows us to test as we migrate from a virtual world to a physical world until we're finally testing a physical vehicle in a physical world. So this is a quick demo of what some undergraduates did. You're gonna see coming out from the back here is a autonomous rover that's just gonna drive around and it is operating in a virtual environment that you see in the top here. And so it's gonna see a virtual object that it is then going to turn away from and avoid. Now, this same vehicle, if you walked in front of it, it would detect you as a physical entity and turn away from you as well. But this allows us now to test this thing in a totally safe environment. And again, very early in the development process. Um, now, it is an undergraduate project, and to be honest, they had quite a few mistakes. In fact, if you look at the virtual environment up here, the view you're seeing is not a top-down view. It's from underneath the floor, so imagine you're looking through a glass floor at it. They had their um, coordinate system backwards, but, you know, undergraduates make mistakes. It's not something that we're going to put into production, but it's a great learning experience. Oh, let me get on the next slide. Uh, so I want to real quickly highlight, because this is a computer engineering program, and I want to highlight the difference between what Dr. Alasadi talked about and what you would do in computer engineering. So there's a series of courses that you would not take out of the computer engineering program to create room for the courses that you would take to support the modeling and simulation program. So to highlight what those courses are, there are two courses in learning how to develop simulations. Um, one is discrete, one is continuous, that's not important. Uh, there's another course that is solely focused on simulation software development. So learning the data structures, the algorithms, the techniques for actually developing simulations in software instead of using tools, which the other two courses um, utilize. And then the last course is totally focused on computer graphics. So creating those visuals so that we can create maybe a virtual world, et cetera, um, and to do data visualization, et cetera. And Dr. Alsadi went through this, but actually he made the mistake, this was intended for modeling and simulation to highlight what are job opportunities. So these are jobs that were taken directly from indeed.com, focusing on where modeling and simulation was what they were looking for to highlight the broad range of options there are, whether it be automotive, medical. It, it's surprising if you go out and do a search on pharmaceutical modeling and simulation that it, basically every pharmaceutical company either has a whole division of modeling simulation or a VP of modeling and simulation. That's how it, important it is in their companies to study how they, not only how do they develop the, um, the drugs, but also their business plans, their manufacturing facilities, everything is simulated in, in their work. Uh, in energy, autonomous systems we were just talking about. Uh, I, I mentioned military is huge, gaming. Um, we've had quite a few students go into the gaming world in aerospace. Uh, we've had students go on, we had one undergraduate student go on to MIT to do autonomous systems. So our students go everywhere. And so that really concludes my, discussion really the focus was to educate you what modeling and simulation is and how it differs from the standard computer engineering program. And so with that, I can take any questions. Hi everyone, uh, before Dr. Adams uh, concludes us out and I thank everyone for presenting, I have a question It kind of relates to a question in the chat but I received a separate question and I think it's an excellent question. It is, what is the difference between IT, cybersecurity, computer science and computer engineering? And Dr. Elithram and Dr. Alasadi both touched on this, but I, if 
I'll let y'all work it out amongst yourselves, but I think it's an excellent question. I feel like it comes up in every presentation we do. So if y'all do not mind, uh, I'm so thankful for the person, I guess, who's attached to Facebook for, uh, for posing it to me. And yeah, uh, whoever wants to take this on, I greatly appreciate it. Okay, can I uh, jump into this? Basically, they are all connected. So if I'm designing a computer system, I need to write an algorithm, which means that I must have a good knowledge in programming, writing algorithm. Uh, I must have a good knowledge of uh, what is the networking on the board. And this is also uh, computer engineer, computer science. So I would like to say that it's uh, uh, as far as computer engineering, it is mostly uh, the design, the hardware design, but hardware design is not isolated. It must have a good skills and knowledge in uh, programming, in algorithms, uh, networking. Uh, as far as cybersecurity, there are two aspects of the cybersecurity. There is a hardware cybersecurity. How do you ensure that the hardware design is trustworthy, is reliable? Especially, uh, we are doing the design here, but remember, we are shipping, the netlist is shipped overseas for fabrication. And the problem is for fabrication, you don't know because we always assume that the adversary is smarter than the designer. And therefore, uh, I'm talking about hardware. How do we know that uh, there is some uh, insertion, some hardware and in some militia, militia, malicious attack, we call it, some insertion of unwanted, unintended hardware. Uh, what if they are using some uh, transistor modeling or some fabrication process that's a solid state that uh, violate or shift the design a little bit, changing the electric characteristic of the design. So meaning that if you are using the chip in some uh, critical applications, and they know that this specific instruction, um, which is in the, um, in the critical path, but they are managing to design something to change something that it will violate the timing uh, concepts of the, uh, how we uh, detect uh, this uh, before you, uh, incorporate the chip in your design. So I'm talking about the uh, hardware uh, uh, cybersecurity. For networking or software and hard, uh, cybersecurity, I think I will let the uh, computer science token uh, about uh, uh, that. But in general, they are all connected. It's, uh, it, it requires knowledge from here and there. So if you think and about Janet, it, yeah, you're ready for me? Yeah, I was just gonna say before you, and please take your time doing so, the question that was posed in the chat was just how do they mix in with one another? Like, like is it uh, beneficial to do a computer science with a cybersecurity like, you know, focus or in computer engineering with a computer science focus? So I just wanted to make sure you knew that was just presented before you go ahead and speak, but thank okay. you very much. So if you think about what the first two years of a program give you, as I mentioned before, it's your toolbox, your basic knowledge that takes you forward into the advanced studies that come in your junior and senior year. <clears throat> and so for engineering, for computer science, you're going to take courses that carry you through calculus and you'll learn programming skills. And the idea behind that is that you're going to become a problem solver in a scientific way. When you look at IT, you take some math, but not through calculus. And you take accounting and finance and economics and management and decision, decision sciences and all of those business related courses. An IT degree is intended 
to make you an expert at keeping the computing systems going, working and contributing to the business of running a business. So if whenever somebody says, call the IT person, what they mean is my computer's not working. They understand the particular infrastructure that's in place and they're able to fix my printer. They're able to install new software, but more so they're able to know the best products to implement and be extremely proficient at doing that and adjusting them to keep a business running. ODU, community colleges, they have a big IT infrastructure. They're fabulous, we could not live without them. But when they hire a computer scientist or a computer engineer, it is because they need to be able to, in addition, solve new problems that are occurring by building new systems. The system could be a system of software systems. It could be a system of software and hardware. Like if you want to put a special card reader on a door going into a building. With cybersecurity, it's the processes and the underlying tools that keep an organization free from cyber crime. And that may be implementing firewalls and those kinds of things. Now, I mentioned before that we have five-year degree programs across these programs. There's one for computer engineering and cyber. There's one for computer science and computer engineering and computer engineering and cyber. I mean, computer science and cyber. What that tells you is if you can do that in five years, there is a common core. And that common core is going to be your lower division gen eds, some math, some programming, and what we do to facilitate allowing students to finish both degrees is we take some of the electives that we have in our programs and or some of the core courses and we say, you know, that's good enough to replace this or that one can be used here. And we work together to make sure that the students gain a level of knowledge necessary to be considered officially Bachelor of Science degree earners in both programs. And so there is a common theme, but what I suggest that you as students do is to look at jobs and the job offerings and see what degree program they're asking for you to have. If you're seeing a lot of certificates, that means it might be more of an IT cyber kind of job. Uh, computer scientists and computer engineers do not gain their degrees through certificate earning. You can augment your knowledge and what, a, what an employer would buy, from, buy of you and your knowledge if you have a certificate is that you've done a lot of testing and proof of knowing a single product. We expect you to have broad knowledge in an undergraduate degree program. If you want depth of knowledge in an area, then you get a master's degree. So I don't know if that answered it, but that was my stab at that question. I think that was perfect, Janet. I appreciate it. And um, I'm gonna just ask uh, a little, I mean, about 10 minutes past time, but if everyone could just include their email in the chat, uh, that way we can uh, any follow up or you know after everybody's presented they'll if they want to direct their question to a specific department they can do so and that way we have an open forum to help and dr adams you can uh absolutely close this out okay great thank you chris and i just i want to thank everybody for participating today uh, it's fascinating, uh, the opportunities um, that are available uh, through our, our wonderful partner, ODU. Um, our tagline here at the Southern Virginia Higher Education Center is your opportunity lives here. And we've heard about some really exciting opportunities through Old Dominion University. So uh, thank you uh, to Chris, to our professors, to our ODU staff, and for those of you, uh, uh, those of you in the audience who, who joined us, uh, thanks for spending some of your Friday with us. Um, please be in touch. 
uh, use the information, the contact information um, that has been provided uh, for you to reach out uh, with additional questions. And, and with that, we'll conclude this Tech Talent Q&A session. Thanks to everybody. Bye.